Hello world and welcome to a tutorial about list models and list views in QML. Over the course of this video, we'll try to answer what is a list model and list view and how can we implement one. Before we start, I want to show you how you can access documentation with an easy Google search of QML followed by the object type. Here, we can learn about all the powerful properties and methods that can be used when developing. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. For our first example, we're going to leverage a list view to generate a set of buttons that will act as answers to a question we're asking. What you're seeing on your screen is some simple starter code. We have some text, a rectangle, and an empty space where we'll be implementing our list model. We'll start off by creating a rectangle that will act as a container for our list view. We'll give it a height of 240 and a color pink to make it easier to conceptualize where we're working. We'll also set some anchor properties to make sure our rectangle stays where we want it to. What you're seeing on your screen is our list view container. Now we'll create our list view. Simply put, our list view allows us to display multiple of the same QML object type as set in our delegate property, but with the option of different data. If you notice, I didn't set a height and width. This is because we anchored our list view to our container. Now we have a visual aid that helps us understand the boundaries of our list view. How cool is that? This removes any guesswork and makes styling way easier. For the time being, we'll also set the model property to three. What this means is we want to display our delegate three times. Moving on to our delegate. Our delegate is the QML object that we want to display, in this case, a button. Now if we run our application, we see our buttons. Because this is a list view, by default it's scrollable. However, we can change this behavior by setting the interactive property to false. And if we run the app again, the ability to scroll is gone. Now that we have a list view, let's implement a list model. Think of the list model as a place where we store our data similar to an array. And in our list model, we have list elements, kind of like how you can have objects in an array. We then want to make sure we give our list model an ID, as this is how the model is referenced by the list view. If we launch the app, nothing has changed. This is because the list view has a model property of 3 instead of referencing the list model ID. After making this change, we also want to reference the key value in our list element in our button text property. If we launch the app, we see our list model data. Super cool. Well, let's take this one step further by adding an on click event to our button. Because our list view is populating data from a list model, we can access those values with a get method that takes an integer as a parameter. In this case, we'll pass the index. And if we look at our console, we see the respective data. That's a wrap for this video. Drop a like if it was helpful. Subscribe so you don't miss a future video about list models and QTQML. And make sure to check out some of the other cool videos we've already uploaded. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.